devil sends the beast with wrath, because he knows the time is short. Let him who have understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. Its number is... What are you, not your flowers? Uh -oh. Hello, Paul! It's me, your old father-in-law. How you doing, son? Doing that good, huh? Uh, business is good, huh? Yeah, that's fucking great. I, I mean, uh, I, I hope you don't mind. I uh, I booked you an opening act for tonight's Raw. Yeah, yeah, I know you're there. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's out in the parking lot. You're gonna love it. It's one of your your childhood heroes. It's the, it's the Iron Sheik. The Iron Sheik. Uh, that's fucked up. That's not who's here, Vince. Uh, what do you mean that's not who showed up? I booked the Iron Sheik. It says right here on my fuck. Oh, fuck. I didn't book the Iron Sheik. Iron what? Run to the hills. Da -da 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 -da. Welcome to Pharaoh's Corner. Tonight, Pharaoh goes to see the greatest heavy metal band in history, Iron Fucking Maiden. I can still remember 1980 when their debut record came out and I had the cassette back when cassettes were basically option number one if you wanted to uh, bring it to school with you, if you had a boom box, I think that's what they called it back in the day. You know, a portable fucking stereo. There was always a kid in our circle who had one. Iron Maiden was way ahead of their curve and way ahead of their time. First two records, Paul Diano was the original singer. Let's get to key components. The original drummer was Clive Burr. The first two albums are absolutely fantastic. They, they're they an interesting mix in the beginning. They're showing signs of what they're gonna be, which is basically classical, progressive, translating to heavy guitars, translating to heavy metal, because they were basically the, a blueprint, along with Judas Priest, of course, for the uh, British invasion of metal, which occurred. And MTV, of course, jumped on board. Iron Maiden had videos on MTV. Judas Priest had videos on MTV. Metal became a thing during the 80s. And if you were fortunate enough to experience that, it was precious. It was amazing. First two records, excellent stuff, classic stuff. Time for a change. Somehow they find the great, great, great Bruce Dickinson, the Phantom of the Opera, the walking, living embodiment of the Phantom of the Opera with the range of a, I can't even describe who, who's like Bruce in heavy metal. Nobody is like Bruce in heavy metal. There's nobody to even compare to how different he is in so many ways. He changes them completely with Number of the Beast. I can still remember when that record came out and uh, many classic albums followed a breakup later on as the 90s came because unfortunately heavy metal which thrived during the 80s got killed when that dude from seattle showed up <laughs> you know as my partner mike so finally reminds me all the time captain depressing kurt cobain with his flannel and his moods <laughs> but you know anyway i digress uh metal was uh under under fire during the 90s basically it had been pushed to the side by the record companies after maiden sold now i believe iron maiden has sold over 100 million records worldwide they are not in the hall of fame it's an absolute disgrace the 90s was tough and they underwent another change and brought in a, this poor fella blaze bailey who everybody dumps on who i actually thought was you know, an excellent singer uh x factor is freaking underrated great album and Blaze gave us a few gems, like, you know, Sign of the Cross and the Klansmen. So, you know, I can't put him with Deano, and I certainly won't put him with Dickinson, but I do believe he deserves his respected spot. Give Blaze a break. The guy was very, very good. Uh, and then, of course, as the 2000s come, which leads to tonight with me and the <clears throat> Bartman 
from Wisteria Hall. We are off to see Iron Maiden right here in lovely Long Island at the, uh, what's the name of this place, Bart? It's uh, Farrow's Corner. No, not this place! Where they're gonna play! Oi! It's the UBS Arena. There we go. Thank where you. the Islanders play, of course. Uh, yeah, we know. What was that? <laughs> oh, sorry. I had to. Anyway, it leads to, in 2000, Bruce Dickinson comes back. Adrian Smith comes back. We've got the... And in the meantime, while these fellas were out, there was this guitar player, Yannick Gares, who, another guy who people pick on. Leave this guy alone. He's great. He's been in the band now. for. They decided to go with three guitars and put out Brave New World in 2000. What a masterpiece. They, they cranked out another masterpiece several years later with A Matter of Life and Death. I went to see that tour, and they play the entire album. You should have seen some of the fans from my generation getting pissed off. I was like, not me. I bought the record. I already knew what they were going to do, so I thought it was fantastic. They, of course, came back and played a few classics for the fans. But my favorite moment from that concert is just while they're playing this whole new album, and they're in the middle of not caring about the past. I mean, these guys are people. They, they're, they're writing new songs. They want to be vibrant now. They don't want to just do yesterday. I got it. I understood. But some fans didn't. So this fucking sign comes up. Play the classics. And Bruce goes, bring that to me. And he shows the entire... This was the Nassau Coliseum, by the way. Home of the Islanders. Uh, he shows this sign to the audience. And the crowd's like, yes, play the classics. And Bruce rips it right in half. Fuck y'all. Wow, the balls. Maida still has a... The fan base, they never lost them. I mean, even when the fans get mad at them, Maiden just cranks out another classic and goes, are, are you over it? Do you understand now what we're doing? What they've done since 2000 is put out classics. This band started in 1975. This band has the greatest on-paper resume of any heavy metal band. I challenge anybody. It's been there, the consistency over the years. The resume is insane. They are the greatest heavy metal band in the history of heavy metal. And now, we're off. Should we run to the hills? I don't have to sing again, do I, Bart? One more time. No, <laughs> Run to the hills. <laughs>
Hello? Who? Steve, Steve Harris? Hi. I, I, I know I didn't mention you on the video. I know, I know. I know you started the band in 1975. I still got an Iron Maiden body buzz. This was the most amazing concert I've seen in the last, I don't know, we could go back a couple of decades to see Iron Maiden at this stage in their 60s, playing like they're in their 20s. It's a, like a WWE well-oiled machine. Everything is so well planned out. The performances are just the energy, the organic energy. These guys don't cheat. They don't cheat. They clearly are not doing drugs and getting drunk all the time. You know, so much for that rock and roll theory. But I mean, these guys are clearly like they're athletes. They go for two hours straight. Bruce Dickinson still sounds like Bruce Dickinson. The founder, the captain of the ship, Mr. Steve Harris. You happy, Steve? I, I, I'm the greatest, the greatest, the, the guy who writes most of the uh, longer masterpieces in this band, the guy who has always been the leader of the greatest heavy metal band in history, uh, the, and the, one of the, what I consider the three greatest and most important bass players in heavy metal history, uh, Steve Harris along with Geezer Butler and the late great Cliff Burton from Metallica, are the three probably to me most important influential bass players in the history of uh, the metal genre. Uh, an amazing set. They started off with the new record. The new record's fantastic. Senjutsu, go get it. Got to the classics. Uh, took a break. Came back and smashed us with some more classics. They're just an amazing band. They've still got it. Two days later, I'm shot. I don't know how those guys do it. I have no idea. But an absolute uh, 10 out of 10. Stage presence, check. Great performances all across the board, check. By the way, the sound system, check. Everything. Set pieces yeah. were amazing. Yep, and completely sold out. Completely packed, you know. Just an incredible time. So anyway, this is to be the brain dead Pharaoh saying, uh, run to the hills. We shall fight on land and in the sea. We shall fight on the hills. We shall never surrender. <laughs> I'm burnt, dude. I got nothing. Wait, wait. Do 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 do